We'll call to order the Thursday, April 8th Finance Committee meeting. If everyone would please stand for the prayer and pledge. Dear Lord, we want to thank you tonight for uh, news that Councilman Bell's father is improving. We ask you to please uh, let that continue. We also want to ask you tonight that we make wise financial decisions, be prudent stewards of a parish's resources. And we ask uh, that even during uh, these tough economic times, to, uh, for us to always remember that there are many who have it much worse. And we are grateful and thankful for what we have. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call. Um, Councilman Jake Snyder is, I believe, the only one that's absent. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilman Johnson as well. There are no chairs additions. Public comment period reminder, if you'd like to speak, please come sign up. We'll roll right on into our monthly finance report section, our sales and use tax report. Good evening, members of the Finance Committee. Uh, you have before you your, your sales and use tax report for our three sales tax districts. Uh, you can see in the middle column the monthly collections, which represents collections uh, collected in month, which represents the February sales. East Ascension drainage, the month to, uh, compared to last year's month of uh, March collections, down 25%. Year to date, down about 4%. Our sales tax district number one, month of March collections compared to last year, down 33%. The year to date, down 5.68%. And our half cent sales tax district, the month compared to last year, is down 34%. And year to date, down almost 6%. The only good news on this sheet is on the um, right-hand column, which is the budget comparison. Uh, the budget for each one is, just, is, is shown, and we're at 25% of the year. So East Ascension collections have collected 28.4%. One cent sales tax, almost 30% at 25% of the year. And our half cent sales tax is almost, uh, well, 29% at 25% of the year. There was a small order, audit in these uh, collections, about a half, I mean a quarter of a million dollars. And on the very next page, you'll see this represents just our one cent sales tax collection. And this is year to date of figures compared to 09. Consumer retail, and this is by sectors. The consumer retail is down 1.2%. Uh, Motor vehicles are down 13.5% business to business is down 14 and a half percent and the petrochemical industry is down 35 and a half percent and then the next uh, chart is the familiar pie chart and this is not scientific this is only uh, the sales tax authorities best guess as to where these uh, what sector these uh, collections are uh, collected from and it, it, uh, this also represents just the 1% sales tax district. And you can see for the 1%, the yield from the petrochemical industry represents 56% of collections year to date. Consumer retail, 31%. Motor vehicles, 9%. And business to business, 4%. And then the last page is our his historical chart for all three of our sales tax districts. The yellow part is year to date, and then the Red part is year to uh, the remainder of the year, representing 11 years or 10 full years in uh, in 010, and you can see where we are compared to all those years in each of the separate three sales tax districts. We're still a little ahead year to date of 08 collections, you can see, and then just down in the uh, year to date. But as I said, uh, the the what we're still looking at is our budget, and we do budget conservatively each uh, 
year and so far we're still ahead of the budget at this 25 percent of the year and if there's any questions I'll be glad to answer them uh, councilman uh, Clark? yes you'd, you'd see it on the uh, on the second page the blue and red bar chart you said petrochemicals down which what's your percentage I beg pardon I didn't hear you on the second uh, 35 yeah the second bar chart page, you said 35 percent for the petrochemical industry yes yeah. okay if I can follow up on that since petrochemical <coughs> is uh, our biggest share and this is continuing to be the, the one sector where we're still not uh, improving very much. I was wondering if, and perhaps this might be part of what's discussed later with the uh, new process for quarter of revenue estimating. But I was wondering if uh, administration couldn't help uh, take the lead maybe and uh, convene a meeting of uh, area plant managers to kind of discuss where the uh, yeah, where their businesses and uh, production cycles and everything are heading because I know with uh, us being so dependent on them and everything and they're feeling the effects of the national right. economy I know we, we kind of asked like, informally for folks who work in the plant here and there but I think it'd be good if we had a just a kind of a powwow with them to see to gauge what's going on right and and we did form that re council did form a revenue estimating committee within the parish and that is dr. Richardson who will speak to you later on in the meeting and that is one of the goals and our sales tax authority does keep in touch uh, authority administrator Mark West does it keep in touch with the chemical plants okay and so he has a good feel too also about what their plans are and you know what percent of production they are at this point in time and okay so we'll get some of that here from the quarter the right new quarterly that's, that's going estimate. to be okay included good. in that com uh, committee we're forming very good councilman Thompson you had something yeah <clears throat> Uh, petrochemical, a uh, certain part of the year, uh, different chemicals sales are down. But I, I don't think we should panic because uh, when one product is down, another one picks up. Uh, during the year, we may just, uh, things may just break even because I, I don't see a lot of chemicals like what, what we sell. I don't see that uh, there's staying down and not selling is just certain chemicals during the year are down in this time of year where a lot of them are down uh, as uh, summertime coming to warm up some of the chemicals sales picks up I, yeah, I don't think we should panic I just think we should watch what we do and uh, watch the way we do business That's all I got. and that naturally is one of the main reasons for this revenue estimating committee that we form so that we can gauge that and also with the audits these huge spikes we see up and down that we can get a smoothing formula so that you know we'll, we'll really know I mean we can't discard audits because they are sales taxes so we just want to see how we can make get a smoothing <laughs> formula developed so that we'll get a more evenly okay very good I'm sorry I jumped the gun. No, that's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any uh, further questions? Okay, we'll move on to uh, item six, revenue and expenditure report. Amanda Barat. Uh, Amanda couldn't be here tonight, so she, her assistant is going to take over for her and Shelly Villar. Um, this is the financial report as of the month of February, which is, um, at 16.66 percent overall the first page is revenues with operating revenues at 10.61 percent of the budget capital revenues are at 1.66 percent of the budget and the grand total of revenues are at 8.48 percent um, the items highlighted in green are explained on page four they're mostly um, under budget due to um, January and February funds that were received and accrued back to 2009 and some February transfer checks were not deposited until March so they'll show up on the March financials 
Uh, page two is expenditures. Operating expenditures. The expenditures are at 14.46% of the budget. Capital expenditures are at 12.61%. And overall expenditures are at 13.81%. The items in green are the line items that are over budget this year and that's mainly due to quarterly and annual purchase orders and contracts encumbered. The third page is um, compares the budget to both year-to-date operating and year-to-date capital projects. And um, again the fourth and fifth page explain the revenues that are under budget on page one and then page six explains the uh, um, expenditure items that are over budget on page two. The last page um, is an explanation of expenditures that were, no, I'm sorry. The last page is um, those disbursements in February that were over $100,000. Do you have any questions? Okay, any questions? No? Okay, thank you. Thanks. Move on to item number seven, budget amendment number four. Supplement to your Good evening. You have before you budget amendment number four, the ordinance for it, and it reads as follows. An ordinance to amend the ordinance approving, adopting, and appropriating the 2010 operating and capital budgets for the Parish of Ascension adopted by the Ascension Parish Council on the 19th day of November 2009. Section 1. The Ascension Parish Council hereby ordains that the ordinance approving, adopting, and appropriating the 2010 operating and capital budgets for the Parish of Ascension is hereby amended, approved, and appropriated as follows operating budget for East Ascension drainage. Under expenditures, there is an increase for the major repairs for flood control of $86,000. Recreation A, we have revenues for the registration fee for summer camp of $55,200. The related expenditures are for non-exempt salaries for $20,500. FICA tax expense for $1,600. Fire, casualty, and general liability insurance for fifteen hundred, and the summer camp program fifteen thousand two hundred. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Councilman Todd Lambert, second by Councilman uh, Bell. Any discussion? <coughs> Just an explanation on the registration. Summer camp is, is that baseball, Mr. Gautreaux? The fifty-five thousand registration that, fee. That's good. <coughs> Chair. Uh, can I make one comment? That's, sure. that's not correct. Okay. <laughs> that thirty-five percent is more like four. On the petrol. On the, on the industry. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. We we was looking at the bar charts. It looked yes. a little big. Thank you. I like. I'm glad you cleared that. <laughs> I was going to go Cleared back. That check. Up. I was going to go back and check my uh, check my check. I'm going to go send down. my resume out. <laughs> <laughs> I got worried there for a second. Yeah. No problem, Miss Gwen. The bar chart is correct, though. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the summer camp is something we're starting at Lamar Dixon this year. Uh -huh. It's going to be a four-week program. We will only have about. 15 to 16 counselors come in and work with the kids. We're going to offer canoeing, fishing, uh, arts and crafts. Uh, the, uh, theaters are coming in and uh, do workshops with us also. It's going to be a full week uh, program and it's going to be $115 a person. And that's what we. When, when is it going to start, Ms. Coach? About the middle of May. Middle of May. Something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? <coughs> I have a motion and a second. Any objection? Motion passes. We'll move on to item number eight, the bid items. Ms. Joan Shivers. 
Disqualification of bidder for limestone grade 89. On December 17, 2009, the purchasing department received four bids for limestone grade 89. The low bidder, Ernest Martin Incorporated, has given written notification to the purchasing department that he is unable to provide the material requested. After review, the purchasing department and Department of Public Work recommend awarding the limestone grade 89 bid to the next lowest qualified bidder, Thaddeus Valerie Trucking Incorporated. Motion. Got a motion by Councilman Pat Bell, second by Councilman Randy Kluwat. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion passes. 8B. On March 16, 2010, the Purchasing Department received two bids for 3M traffic control signs and supplies. The bids were received from Traffic Control Products Company and Como Signs and Supplies Incorporated. After review, the Purchasing Department and Department of Public Work recommend accepting the lowest responsive bid from Traffic Control Products Company. Motion by Councilman Bell. Second. Second by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion passes. We'll move on to our contracts report for the month. Still so have in your packet um, the contract report for the month of March. Um, if you have any questions, most of them are either public bid or um, professional services contracts that were competitively procured. Does um, discussion? Questions? Okay, we will uh, go ahead and move then on to item number 10, our monthly economic development report. Mr. Berthelot and Mr. Toulis and Mr. Eads. Good evening, Chairman Lohr and members of the Finance Committee. We want to uh, again thank you for the opportunity to present our monthly report. And at this time, mm -hmm. I want to call our President CEO, Mr. Mike Eads, up. And after his report, we'll hear from the lady who's in charge of which in charge of <laughs> business development, Kristen Batulis. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, one of the things in your hands out is our annual economic trends analysis that we publish in the spring, which uh, gives you an update on some of the socioeconomic population figures uh, and other related items going back to 2000. Uh, if you looked at that, uh, you know, most of that's uh, very positive. Uh, I'd like to make a couple of comments. Uh, if you look at the first chart, you see that uh, not only has Ascension Parish gained population in and of itself, but we continue to uh, grow at a rate much higher than the Baton Rouge metropolitan area as a whole. And uh, so I guess you could say that the center of population of, of that metropolitan area is actually coming this way very quickly. Uh, and a couple of other things. Uh, the, the mere fact that, that we're growing in population doesn't necessarily translate into economic development opportunities sometimes, unless, as particularly in the case where your labor force isn't growing. Well, that's not the case in Ascension Parish. Uh, the, Site location consultants we work with, many of them look at the age groups uh, between 15 and 54 years old, and they call that the prime working age group. And uh, I'm pleased to report that what our report reflects is that group of the population in the parish since 2000 has grown at about the same rate as the population itself, which means we're, you know, we're not uh, having, you know, a all old people are all young people. <laughs> we do have a good age distribution uh, in, the, in the parish for the, for the new residents, which translates into labor availability. And then thirdly, uh, back on uh, chart number five, we have a breakout in there of the change in employment by industry type. 
And with uh, a couple of exceptions, every type of industry in this parish in the last, since 2000 has grown. And uh, that's a good sign, too, of diversity. And something certainly uh, that, uh, you know, the, uh, a big uh, goal of, of the Economic Development Corporation, and I think of this, of this council, is to, to diversify the economy. Uh, as far as the uh, economic development activity, you have your projects chart uh, before you that we present every month. Uh, we have 25 active projects on the, on the books, so to speak, that we're working with or tracking in various stages of uh, activity, and they re represent about 1,500 potential new jobs. Uh, otherwise, uh, just a couple of news, newsy type items to report. Um, we spent most of the afternoon today with the new executive director of the Business Development Division of Baton Rouge Chamber, a gentleman named Ian Vasey. Uh, he comes here from uh, uh, Phoenix, the Phoenix area, and he's been in the economic development business as well as in the private sector real estate and development business for a number of years. Very professional. I think uh, he's going to do very well here, and we're glad to have him. And in addition to that, he was accompanied by the new executive vice president of uh, Baton Rouge Chamber, Rod Miller. Uh, he also has an extensive economic development background, uh, and uh, so we're glad we're glad to have those two gentlemen in the community, and look forward to working with them. Uh, speaking of of the petrochemical industry or the chemical industries, one of the uh, things we're most curious about, and I'm sure you are too, is what is the impact of the merger between uh, CF and Terra? Uh, we don't have the answer to that. Uh, we're trying to get an audience uh, with, uh, with CF uh, to uh, see if we can't find out, uh, you know, what, if, if there is any impact, good, bad, or, or, or otherwise. And uh, we'll certainly report that back to, to you all once we learn something. Uh, and uh, with that, the other thing we're continuing to work on is the certification of the Donaldsonville Industrial Park under the state's new Certified Economic Development Sites Program. We hope to get that application out in the next couple of weeks, and if we're successful, that will be the first one in the state. But uh, that uh, concludes my report. I'll turn it over to Kristen to make more questions. Thank you. Good evening. I think I, I touched base at the last meeting um, about our buildings and sites database. We, we try to um, collect all of the available land that may not be listed through a realtor or um, and, and collect this on a database that we have available on our website. It's also available on the State Economic Development Department's website along with uh, the Baton Rouge Area Chamber's website. And um, since we last met, we've, we met with two developers. One. Um, some landowners in Donisonville with the with the Riverdale golf course. It's um, it's an extremely attractive piece of property. They're they're ready to go forward to to um, try to get interested prospects to that area. It's got highway frontage, um, about 113 acres. So we're excited to be working with them and try to get some prospects there across the river. We're also we also met with the Riverton. T and D development groups, and I know I know they've met with the parish as well. So um, we're excited to put that on our on our on our website and see if we can't get some commercial, uh, some re retail into that uh, development. They they also actually had a couple of parcels along the river that we'll list as well um, in our database too. So also in your packet, we do have a flyer that the parish, along with the economic development group, the city of Don city of, of Gonzales, the Donisonville Chamber, and the Ascension Chamber. We're partnering with all of them to offer a free business incentive seminar to interested parties who are starting a business or or companies that are looking to expand to take advantage of some of the um, of the incentives available at the state level. So we just want to get that word out on that, and that's going to be April 28th, 8 o'clock to 9:30 at Lamar Dixon. And that's all I have today, unless y'all have any questions. Okay. Any questions for economic development folks? Thank right. Thanks, y'all. We'll move to item number 11, a Lamar Dixon report. Mr. Grant. 
working with the Department of Finance, we've put together this the, the one-page report that you have before you, and you'll see this um, on a monthly basis from this point forward. What it shows you at this point is um, if you look at the second to last column, the total actual plus encumbrances as of February 28th, uh, revenue of 413,000, expenditures of 213, and an in, uh, operating surplus of 139.6, and an ending fund balance of 232,823 as of February 28th. Th that does not include, as you see in the note, some some receivables that we still need to book for, and we've all, we have billed these for the LSU Livestock Show and District Livestock Show. Uh, we, we expect to have a very favorable end of the first quarter as a result of those receivables. The receivables total about 83,000 that are less than 30 days. Quick question. Uh, Councilman Lambert. Mr. Grant, just uh, update on where are the private donations, how, how are they coming for us? Are we reaching our goal where we, the $1 million that we were looking at earlier? The, the, bu the budget no number that we put in for, for private donations was 250 and we are about halfway there on the 250 But what, what was told at the meeting, you know, a million dollars, we know we're close to that, correct? That's, okay. that's not what I budget. Mr. President. We were told by a certain person, we didn't tell you we were getting a million dollars, but we said we were going to raise about 250000 and that's what we plan on doing this year. And uh, but that was a, that was a big sale on voting to buy Lamar Dixon. That when he came up, you know, and I think it was a group, you know. It, I know it was one guy brought it up, but you know, everybody was on agreement that we were going to get a million dollars in private donations, and that was a big part of the way a lot of the guys up here voted, you know. Because uh, and plus, I, I to start off with, I hadn't seen the plan yet, you know, the the operating plan. Uh, I think we have that for you if you okay. like it. And uh, again, we didn't get up here and say we were going to get a million dollars. Some a gentleman came up and said he was going to give a million dollars. Uh, as you can see uh, right now, we, we're in pretty good shape uh, as far as operating, and uh, we plan to continue to do so. And uh, we are out. Uh, Mr. Bell and I certainly go out on a regular basis and uh, talk to businesses. Uh, in fact, tomorrow he's meeting with some people and. I'll meet with some people, and uh, you know, we certainly like uh, some of you to come join us if you'd like. I mean, it's uh, it's for everybody in the parish. It's not just for me and him to go out and do this, but we plan on doing it. We want to do it, and uh, we feel like you, Lamar Dixon is getting a lot of use right now. That uh, by our people from the parish, and also uh, by people from outside the parish. So, again, the, the million dollars. Uh, Never played into my figure. I'd love to have it. Mm. I mean, it would have certainly helped that we wouldn't have to be doing what we're doing today if that would have come through. Correct. And hopefully uh, at some point we still uh, get some of that money that was promised to us. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not going to wait and on I, And that's all I was asking, yeah, just an yeah, update on yeah. where, you know, if y'all you know, receiving any of it, you know. Well, we're going to get what we said we were going to get uh, as far as what we're going to go out yeah. and raise. So. Councilman Yeah, Mr. Parish President, certainly uh, I'm sure Mr. Lambert's not blaming you, but uh, Mr. Prejean, who did make the promise and made the promise to Ascension Parish people, not only to this council, but also to the citizens of this parish, uh, has not followed through on his promise. And the last, uh, I guess, note that I saw in the paper, which uh, was an article about it, he said that he was going to meet with you in January to look at your plan. He had some problems with the plan. He wanted to see how the plan what you had vision so obviously he hadn't made an appointment with you and obviously you hadn't met with him or have you and he's and he's we, declined. we have uh met but not about lamar Dixon okay so he at, at this so, point but you we, had, we've had not had any discussions about the million dollars and, and, and i think i think that's what councilman uh lambert he he gets questions i still get questions when is mr president going to come across with his promise and that's that's all we're going to bring up until mr president comes back to this mic and says he's not going to give the money, I'm going to continue to ask. I, under, I, I totally understand, Mr. Valentine. I'm not uh, questioning what you say. That's right. I, I am just saying that at this point, we are not relying on that million dollars right. to make. You I, didn't promise to me. Nope. It wasn't you. I, nope. We but, understand. But, but I will make sure that we 
continue working on getting a million dollars. Right, no problem. So. Councilman Bell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to reiterate what the, what the president has said, and we do need everybody's help on this council. This is a parish facility. It's well used. I happened to be out there last Friday. 600 of our people in the parish are using it for the sock hop. It's pretty good for one day. It's being used like that every day with some type of, we do need your help. I mean, you guys, uh, it's no problem. <laughs> we'll, we'll accept 5,000, 10,000, 25,000. Uh, everyone that's up here is positive. Let's go out and do it. Um, we're gonna do what we said we're gonna do. Also, I guess I've got the, we own Lamar Dixon. Thanks to our legislators and we, we're not purchasing Lamar Dixon. It was handed down to us, so. Uh, we'll do what we said. We do need your help, and I would appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? I Councilman uh, Nancy Lambert? I guess one thing while we're bringing them all to the table, let's, uh, let's get the city of Gonzales in one of those meetings also and see where we're going to we're gonna stand. We, we have made a little progress there, so uh, I think that they've appropriated some money in their budget uh, for this year. Uh, help offset some costs so I would just say that uh, we've made progress in, in on that uh, but again that budget hadn't passed yet so I'm not going to get up here and say anything and, and guarantee anything <laughs> yeah. and I, I will take up for Mr. Nicky he's good at heart he's just trying to help the parish just like we all are thank you okay. all right Move on to item number 12, uh, quarterly revenue estimating report, CAO Cedric Grant and Dr. James. Reed. Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Kinchin is passing out a copy of the report that will be appearing on the screen. Gentlemen, this is our effort to embark on an annual revenue estimating process, which I think will be extremely helpful in one of the goals that we have of um, trying to improve our budget, which is long term financial forecasting, so we can begin to put a little bit of reality into how we plan for the, sh the near term and the short term. You've, you've historically received 12, a 12 month budget and 12 month or monthly reports on revenues. But my hope here is that over the next year, you, we'll begin to build the building blocks for you to understand the long term revenue potential in, in, of, of the parish. Uh, we've been very fortunate to retain Dr. James Richardson, who's an economist on, uh, on the faculty of LSU, uh, to do this estimating for us. And Dr. Richardson also has the distinction of sitting on the state's revenue estimating conference. Uh, so I think we have uh, the leader in the field in, in this state. And as you'll see it through his presentation here, we, we're starting at ground zero here to get, give you the building blocks in this. What we did in the last budget and what we will do here on a quarterly basis is you as the finance committee will sit as the revenue estimating committee for the parish. You, for the first three quarters, we will give you the building blocks of this and show you how the revenues are built and what they can be uh, forecast to that. In the fourth revenue estimating conference in October, what we'll be asking you to do is the first step in validating those revenues that we'll use in the budget that we will submit to you. Um, so th th this will be an ongoing process. You'll be gainfully engaged in this, and, and, and what I encourage you in this presentation to, to, to engage Dr. Richardson and, and ask questions for what you want to see as we develop this process and, and go down the line. And with that, I'll introduce Dr. James Richardson from LSU to make the presentation. <coughs> Thank you, Cedric, and also thank you for having me here this evening. Um, I put together this report, and it will show up on the screen. You have a copy in front of you, and it has really two parts to it. The first, as Cedric was referring to, is kind of the process, the procedure, a history of the, of the <laughs> revenue estimating conferences, not in, just in Louisiana, but also in other states. And then the other part of it is to let's get down to vast tax and kind of think about how we go about forecasting revenues for the parish, short term and long term. And I guess you always need to start with a disclaimer. And this is something happened to me when I was been working with the state. A, a reporter asked me, what can you be sure, say about your forecast? And kind of glibly I said, well, you can be sure it's wrong. Well, the next day in the newspaper, he put the big headline, Economists Always Wrong, which was, of course, a tremendous thing for my kids that become refrigerated material for the next 
two years. But we, we want to make sure that, that we aren't, if, if we could predict everything right on the money, you would all want me to tell you about stocks and bonds, too. Well, we don't want to oversell the idea of forecasting. We want to make sure that we are, again, prudent in it. And one of the things I think that is really local governments have done very well, and central Paris has done very well, is they've been very prudent. In fact, when Gwen referred to the good news on that, the chart, the sales tax report, and she referred to the right-hand column, it's good news because of very prudent forecasting last quarter of 2009. But let's go through and talk about all, all, all the forecasting process. And uh, first, I want to, again, thank uh, Mark West, who is a sales tax collector here. He was very, very kind, very generous in getting information to me, uh, timely, uh, very well done. So I, I do appreciate his, his help. And we will continue to need his help to make everything work well. I went back and I looked at your budget for 2010, and there were certain initiatives. Three of the initiatives really dealt with spending issues, consolidation of fleet management, the issue of, of electronic com timekeeping, and then vehicle leasing. One dealt with the revenue side, implementation of this revenue estimating idea, looking at both short and long term. And that's what we're here to discuss tonight. And there, there are really two parts to it. The short term is your, you have to have a budget each year. It has to balance. You can't spend more than you have. You're not the federal government. So in that sense, you, you have a real constraint. And then in the long term, though, you have to think about as a parish, you think about the world not just for the next 12 months, for the next 12 years. And you're, when you do that, you have to think about, again, possible expenditures, and then, okay, revenues, where did they come from to support those expenditures? Can we do it or not? So we are going to focus on both the short and the long term. Revenues in both cases, they're that constraint. They're the, they tell us what, how much we can do or how much we cannot do. In Louisiana, the Revenue Estimating Conference was initiated back in 1987 by statute constitutionally in 1990. It has a different structure in the sense of it was set up very, it, it has the governor or his designee, speaker of the house or his designee, the president of the senate or his designee, and then a private economist or a, you know, economist from a private university or public university. Now I've been asked to serve on that committee since its inception. It was created for a very different reason though. <coughs> It was created because during the 80s, when we had the recession in Louisiana, the state government essentially tried to balance the budget by phony revenue estimates. <clears throat> they merely made the number high enough, the revenue estimate high enough, you didn't have to cut spending or anything like that, and it worked for the first three months of the year, and then it caught up with you. And they did that three years in a row, and yet we had a billion dollar problem, deficit, when Governor Romer came in. So in that sense, it was a very different reason. And we put it like this, and indeed one of the real elements of that committee was we set it up so that it had to be a unanimous decision on how much money the state would spend. And that was the final number. You couldn't change it. So in that sense, the private economists had the same power as the governor in terms of his vote or her vote. So any of that, but that was that purpose. It was a very different reason what, how it was created. It's done in other states, 27 other states use some type of consensus forecasting. So it's a common method for forecasting revenues. Number of people on the, th on the conference may vary. It's three in Iowa, 35 in, 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 in Delaware. Sometimes the people on the conference will be political members. Sometimes they'll be professional staff. So there, there's no common way of saying this is how it's done. However, the one element, if you look around, around the country, the one element that really improves the accuracy of the forecasting is making sure local people are involved. That is, the worst thing you want is a bunch of so-called experts from outside the area to come in and tell you how much money you're going to have. You, really, you may want some of their background 
You may get some of their, 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 their expertise, but you also want the local people who really have got their feet on the ground, who, who are dealing with the businesses here on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's the one thing you really want to keep in mind as we, as we put together the, the process. New Orleans has a model. It's a, a forecasting model. Essentially, what they do is they have a group of people who are economists at Tulane, UNO, people who work on the financial staff of, of the mayor's office and the city council. They get together, they talk about assumptions, they talk about forecasts. They then bring those to this a group, and then it goes to the city council. In their situation, again, this is in their city charter, that number becomes the maximum, is you, they can always lower the number. So that, that's got, but that's in their city charter, the way it works. But here we are talking about a process in which we are, we are going to bring you information, you serve as a person, ultimately says, yes, that's a good number that we, we can live with. So, so that's how the, we see it working. So, so that's the first part. The important thing is we want to make sure that for, every forecast is based on economic realities. We want to make sure that they are accurate when we have experienced financial officers uh, of the government working with outside experts. And then I think we have to make sure, again, if you don't, don't expect every forecast to be absolutely on the money. It's not going to be that way. We, we have to be careful as, as we, as, about what we promise. We'll make sure we don't overpromise. Uh, in our case, as I talked to Cedric and Tommy, I think the idea is, okay, we want to make sure that we have a good perspective not only on the next 12 months but the next five and ten years. We want to have that long-term outlook as well as that short-term outlook. We also note that in a parish like <coughs> Ascension, you have different government bodies. Some tax bases, you have Gonzales that has its little tax base, which is not exactly like your tax base. You have the school board that has tax base over the entire parish, all of the municip uh, municipalities as well. You have an east, you have a west. So in that sense, the, you have some tax bases that are a little bit different. So, so we want to kind of get our hands around that. And again, there is a lot of cooperation that can be done among the different forecasting units. And now that's kind of the process that we'll go through. We'll be doing this every three months for you. Just focusing initially on the sales tax. Obviously, that's part, a major part of your budget here. And that was the one that was referred to in the sales tax report today. And here on the first chart, you're looking at the base, because this is what really drives your collections. And, 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 and the tail line at the very top, and I, if I can use this uh, pointer here, we'll get it pointed directly, I'll be okay. It, the tail line, I may not be able to use it, the tail line, that's the school board. And that's, that's the biggest tax base you'll have, because that's the tax base that includes every municipality, all of the parish. The, the red line is the tax base for East Ascension, which would be including Gonzales. The, the, the blue line will be on the uh, rural base. And then the bottom line is Gonzales. So in that sense, you have, you have the, the four, four different bases there. And that just gives you a hint of, of, of the size and how they move together or how they do not move together. Uh, and that's the, the purpose is to, to, again, get a sense of, okay, you note that the Gonzales tax base, if you look at it just kind of naked eye, it doesn't seem to have the same fluctuation, the same up and down movement, at least as big as, say, the parish does or as, as you do as a part of, as, as, as excluding Gonzales. And that is because it doesn't have the industrial complexes as such. It doesn't have some of the businesses. It has more of a retail pattern, whereas you have more items that may be a little bit more cyclical, a little bit more subject to ups and downs. So you have, you have a difference there. If you look at your east and west rural parish, let me change it, tax base compared to the school board. Always kind of using the school board as the, because it's everything. You, you note that the, 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 the 
green line is the average of your tax base compared to the school board's tax base over the period from 1999 to 2009, 11 years, and it's about 69.3%. <coughs> you note that you move up and down rather considerably, and that's because, again, you have a certain industry, you have industries that have that cycle. You note that back in, in, in the, uh, that was back in 1995, 96, you were below, but up, you note, in 98, 99, you were well above the average because, again, you had more activity there. You note that in the early 2000 period, you fell, and it's now climbing back a little bit. But you note, and, and, and you note that, is, that means something because every percentage point means about $250,000 to your budget. So if you are at 69.3 and move up to 70.3, you gain about $250,000. If you move up to 71.3, you, you gain about $500,000. So it means money. So that's why you're looking there. That's why you're looking at what's happening to your tax base. If you look at the Gonzales tax base relative to the, your east and west rural tax base, again, the one thing you note is that over time, it has risen from about 35 to just above 40, about 41. And again, part of that is it has risen because it has enhanced its retail <coughs> suction. People shop here. And the, probably it will continue to do that for some time to come, at least given the current structure of the communities, the current places where retail stores are likely to locate. So we, we just note that. And again, this is not trying to pit one against the other. This is merely saying this is the way the world is. We just have to look at it. If we then look at the longer term process and we look at what's happened to the parish, and this was referred to in the Economic Development Report, report. you note know that Ascension Parish is, one of the, is the fastest growing parish where it competes with Livingston on a day year debate in, in, the, in, in, in the state. You had 54,000 people in 1990, you have 104,000 in 2009, and given the trends, you are expected to have almost twice that in 2030. Now, you find that if you look at what's happened in terms of population growth in the parish and your sales tax collections, you note that there is a very positive correlation. And for every new person entering the parish, doesn't matter where they live, but entering the parish, that you pick up about $211 in your one cent tax. For a household, about 2.8 people in a household, roughly speaking, you pick up a little bit over $600 for a new household in the community. So there is a growth in that collection as your population increases. That indeed may improve because as you get additional people, you also get additional retail and they won't have to go back to other parishes to shop as much. So you will find that. But there is a fact that, yes, there is definitely a very definite correlation, statistically significant correlation between the population and, and the sales tax collection. They grow. The same is true for, for employment. It has risen uh, uh, not quite as fast as population, but it's risen as well. If you look at the little chart, and the green line is based on the so-called equation. The red line is what actually happened. And you see that it, what actually happened there is around that trend line. But what you do note is back in the late 90s, there was a surge of sales tax selections. And if you look back, we're, try, we're now going back and saying, can we explain those surges? Because in the short term, that's important. 
Now, if you look back in the early, late 1990s, you note there were a number of major expansions of plants in this parish. Plants pay sales tax on their building up goods. It becomes a, a, a nice bucket of money for a while, and then it goes away. Well, that happened. You note in the early 2000 period, in 2001, a minor recession had a feedback effect on some of our industries here, your sales tax collections dropped. And then, and then you note from about 2005 up to about 2008, looking at that red line, looking at the slope of it, its shape, you see there's, wow, we're growing fantastically. Of course, that is the Katrina effect. People bought things here. People came here to re do their wardrobe and, and do things like that. So you had you had a, 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 a outside event happening, which you were the beneficiaries of. We didn't cause it, but we were benef beneficiaries of it in terms of sales tax collections. Now you note that it's peeling off, and 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 of course you now have the recession issue, we, we, the national recession we have to deal with. Something we we didn't cause, but something we have to deal with, and and so we can think we have a fairly good handle on the trend. It's next time we hope to have a better handle on the deviations around that trend to, as, we, as we prepare our short-term forecast. If you look at the next chart, you say, okay, let's go out to 2030. Let's think ahead as, as, we, as you plan for your infrastructure, for your major projects that's going to service the population. As you anticipate, how many people are we going to have to serve? What's going to be the population we have to deal with? What's the car track we have to deal with? Well, we anticipate that if you look out going out to 2030 based on the trend equation, yeah, you expect to have your, your, your one cent tax is going to be generating about $35 million. A lot more than it does today, of that, of particularly what is forecast is a little bit over 13. So in that case, you see it's generating, it will have a good generation there. Of additional dollars for you, so it's it's going to be it's the the tax structure will have a growth element to it, and it will and that growth will drive your additional collections. What we note is the population picks up the trends. So as we look ahead, five or ten years, I think we we have a fairly good barometer on what can we expect to happen, tax wise. It doesn't pick up the turning points, doesn't pick up the cycles. It takes a little bit more detail to do that. And that's what we're going to be working on in the next phase as we prepare your budget for the end of the year when you have to adopt the budget for next year. You want a real number, a hard number, a good number, not only for the next five years, but for the next 12 months as well. And I think that's what we'll hope to be able to give you that type of number. If you also look at <clears throat> this chart that's kind of colorful, it, it's the one that kind of tells you about where your dollars come from. This is your one cent tax. And again, this information is courtesy of Mark West. And, and you note you have retail, you have the plants, you have the business and to business industries, you have the contractors, and you have your motor vehicles. And, and this is a, the percent of your tax base that is retail. And you note that percent that is retail is now over 30 percent. So that's a, one of the large slugs, large groups. Your plants in this situation take all their amounts to about a little bit less than 35 percent. The business to business will be a little bit less than 20 percent and then vehicle is about 15. So you get a sense of, okay, we have to focus. We need to focus on the retail. We need to focus on the plants because they're big items. But you also have the business of business that tends to be more volatile. It goes up and down a lot. That's right. And motor, vehicle, motor vehicles is, has certain volatility to as well. So those are things we have, to, we have to kind of focus on as we think about the short-term forecasting. Give us a hint. And then on, on the next page, you note that this is a chart prepared by, by Mr. West. And again, you get a sense of, of the, the retail, the plants, the business, independent suppliers, the contractors, and, and the uh, the, the, the motor vehicles. So you get a sense of what's going on. And again, what this really tells us is where you need to look. And this is why it's very important to have local people involved because they know about the plants. 
or they'll know about the retail activities going on much more than somebody who's just looking at numbers who's not, who's not living here as well. But what we want to do is identify the variables picking up the cycles and the turning points. It's very important. And we're going to do that by talking to people in the community, businesses, financial people who are dealing with the community, to get a better sense of that. And I think that's a very important part of, of trying to put together a forecast. But for right now, our forecast, uh, the process is this is the beginning. I think by the next time we'll have a, a, a more definite set of people that will be involved in terms of getting a number to you. People will help us do that. And then we'll start getting numbers to you in June. Hopefully we'll have a better model for predicting the short term as well as the long term. And then by October we'll have be able to give you not only a 12-month forecast but also a five-year forecast as well that you can kind of focus on and say, okay, I can count, I can count on that. I can, we can plan on that basis for, for our community. And I'll be happy to answer any questions right now. Dr. Richardson, uh, before I open up the floor, I just wanted to make a few remarks. First, I uh, appreciate uh, this, this work effort. You know, I think for uh, about a year and a half now, we have uh, in this committee talked about uh, some of our challenges that are facing us in terms of uh, major strategic uh, investments in, in sewer and roads and big ticket items. And I think we've, we've done a, a good job on it. So those are kind of things on a macro level. On a micro level, I think we've done a number of things with um, drilling down to each individual fund and looking at uh, you know, percentages month to month and all that, which is great in, in these lean times. But you know, the, big, the big ticket items has always been a challenge to us. You know, being on, on a lean budget, how are we going to be able to fund these massive infrastructure improvements? And if you're looking year to year, that's, that's much more difficult to do. And so this, this tool, I think, will really provide us a, uh, a real sense of a uh, strategic plan for uh, how, how we might tackle those major items. So uh, I appreciate the effort. I think well, as we refine this, it'll, it'll get uh, even better. And uh, I'll just open up the floor to any questions. Nope. No question, but Dr. Richardson, I appreciate your efforts also. It was very enlightening, and thank you, sir. Looking forward to some more uh, dialect. Thank, thank you. you. Very much. Council McClure? Yes, once, I want to thank you also. Uh, basically, like uh, Mr. Lord said, we're looking at long-term major infrastructure, putting something together for large infrastructure packages, and, you know, and the funding for that is basically uh, orderly. Any municipality can afford to just pay it out of their pocket. They're looking at bonding, so they need the long-term projections. We've uh, we've experienced a pretty good rating in Ascension Parish for for a good good long time. We have several of our tax base uh, right now that are are bonded out for some long terms, and uh, it'll be be quite the challenge to see whether whether we're looking at. You know, something major for infrastructure, or basically we're looking at breaking down the tax that we have now and the allocations of where they're going and what the people want to do with it. Well, hopefully the information will help you make a good decision on, on issues like that. Okay. Any further comments or anything? All right. Thank you, Dr. Richardson. We thank look you forward to much. seeing you again. Okay. We'll move to item uh, 13, uh, change order number three for Holly Construction. Uh, Grove Park renovation, the amount of twelve hundred and sixty-three dollars. Um, motion. Motion Thank by you. Councilman Thompson, second by Councilman Joseph. Discussion. Objection. Motion passes. Item fourteen. Change order number two for Holly Construction LLC for the Oak Grove Park renovation, the amount of two thousand seven hundred and seventy-seven dollars. Motion. Motion by Councilman Bell. Second. Second by Councilman. I'm sorry, Joseph. Discussion. Objection. Motion passes. Item number 15, the renewal of the WIC services contract in the amount of $679,240 for the parish of Ascension. Uh, Mr. Grant and Mr. Metasta. Councilman, the purpose of this is a renewal of an annual contract for nutrition services at the health unit. Mr. Motion. Second. Motion by Councilman Thompson, second by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion passes. 
Item number 16 is the renewal of an intergovernmental agreement between the Parish of Ascension Fire District Number 1 and the City of Gonzales to provide fire protection services outside of municipal limits. $120,000 revised to add a 30-day termination. Motion. Motion. Motion by Councilman Kluat, second by Councilman Bell. Objection. Discussion? Objection? Motion passes. Item number 17, motion to adjourn by Councilman Tom Lambert. Second. Second by Councilman Thompson.